Sheriff Errol Hogg, about 28,000. And the armored car. Those sharks would have let us know they mean business. Nobody's been hurt yet. Where do you want us, Sheriff? Well, they could take 47 west or 20 south, but I'm betting on the old quarry road. You and Bonnie take the mountain avenue crossing. We'll set up a mile on the other side. Take your time, Stones. Got like 10 seconds. Drive those armored babies. One inch steel plate all around, impenetrable glass. Can't put a bullet in anywhere. It's a tank that can do better than 90. Well, we stop Rommel. I think we were ahead of them, if they took this road. This is Soames on the old quarry road. They got through, Sheriff. Barney's hurt. Watch out. Here they come. Like I said, Hog, they mean it. You know you boys been speeding. Is that meeting? It's eight o'clock, Monday night in the arts auditorium. I'll see you then. Ben, come on! Hey, try not to get into a fight, okay? All right. Bye, Mom. Mm -hmm. See you later, kid. Bye, Ben. Bye, Bye. You know my boy. Good. Right, I'm taking over the airport, are you? Just 
Just give us time, Lieutenant. Well, what are we standing here for? Right, you're after the woods, huh? Right. For the next 36 hours, Loma City can go to the devil as far as I'm concerned. Check with Hobbs if anything goes wrong, but here they try. Hey, have a ball, huh? They don't quarrel. They will. Good shot. <laughs> All right, that's one for me. <laughs> uh, uh, quite a bird you got there, son. Well, you got the next shot. <laughs> With all its shortcomings, I still think that college is a rewarding experience. Don't you? To a degree. But what good is a curriculum that's 100 years old? They've got to make some changes. If they don't, you students will, by any means necessary, is that it? I believe in law and order and all of that. My old man's a cop. Is that the word you use? So far it is. Don't tell your ma you're thinking about quitting school. She wouldn't understand. Do you? No. It's been a good weekend. <clears throat> Don't tell your mom about this either. About what? About not sleeping in a motel. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. Take it easy. Oh, hi. Uh, your car? That's right. Phew. Sure got it made. No, I am, don't you? Well, your pa does. I told him I'd be calling on him today about the insurance. <laughs> you know, uh... Well, in the construction business, needs all the protection he can get. He's not home. He ain't. Where is he? He's working. Oh, doggone. How about that? I come all this way, and he ain't here. 
Say what time he'd be back? He said about six. Doggone. Your ma here? Oh, I forgot. Your ma's dead, ain't she? I'm sorry. Excuse me. It's okay. Yeah. What's that thing you're reading there? A book. I know that. What kind of book? You wouldn't be interested. Oh, I don't say that. I like books. Hey, one of them college kids? That's right. Oh, yeah. Loma State, huh? Got your own car and everything. Bad. Not huh? bad. Look, I'd uh, appreciate it if you'd just go. Oh, look, I come all this way, and you're pawing here. Oh, it's a warm day. I haven't made my first sale. The selling is drying. Where couldn't you give me a cold drink or something, please? You look like you could use one yourself. I mean, it must be 80 in the shade. Oh, thank you. You know, there's uh, nothing like a cold drink on a warm day. I think you'd better go. You got no cause to worry. Yeah, hey, it's uh, it's nice the way you got that shirt tied. Give us a kiss. Mm. Well, I'm not going to get to that signing tonight. I am beat. It'll keep. Sheriff's going to be back tonight, and I won't be sorry. I'll get in, huh? Hey, honey. You've been here a year. You're not still living in Texas. I know that. So he's the sheriff, and I'm his deputy, and Loma City's my hometown, and I like it the way it is. Now, did I say anything? No, you didn't. But Tex, honey, it was on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that dress and what's inside. And I'm going to have another beer. Harv, I'm clean out of beer. My brother Eddie was over this afternoon. What did he have to say five beers worth? Now, Harv, he's been very good to us, lending us the money for the room and everything. He asked you why I don't quit? We didn't talk about it. I got ribs in the oven. Come on. Mm, so that's what I've been smelling. Yep. I could eat a bear. I'll bet you could. So what did he say? 
He said that that is going to be a fine room and that you are a fine carpenter. That's what he said. You got squash and limes, too. Oh, that's just fine. You know, they're making five and six dollars an hour now. Who is it? Carpenters. Well, you could be making double what you're making now. Wouldn't have to work for one of them, neither, Eddie says. I thought you didn't talk about it. He's only trying to help. Honey, I'm a cop, not a carpenter. I like it. I'm trained for it, and I'm good at it. All right. So do me a favor, will you? Next time your brother Eddie comes around, hide an extra can of beer for me. <laughs> Sure. But you're having your dinner now. Just a minute. Hey, Jim. Vance. Oh. How'd everything go? Oh, quiet, quiet. Couple of drunks, about a dozen speeding tickets. One of the boys in the lockup had to be cooled down. But otherwise smooth, very smooth. Good. You have a good time? How are you partial to pheasant? We love them. That's good. Because we got to brace more than we can use. Come on, Vance. Bring them over here. You know your ma's waiting. Hey, Alma, come have a look. Good evening, Miss Gregory. Well, you could have at least thanked him. Well, didn't you? Of course I did. Well, that ought to be enough. Hello, Gregory. I guess you think I'm buttering them up. If you want to give them those birds, that's your business. Let me tell you something. Hob Gregory is white, and I'm black. And so is the county, part black and part white. And I think we'd do a better job than if we were all white or all black. You understand? Sheriff, trouble old Cliff Wilders. <laughs> Start to intervene us. I think we got her in time. Can I talk to her? She wouldn't hear a word, Sheriff. I'm going with her. Give us half an hour. She may die! Lift, Cliff. Let him do their work now. There's nothing you can do. Settle down. Pull yourself together. Maybe you're right. I'm going to the hospital. Vance, tell your mama what happened. Say that I'll be late. Then you can go to the hospital if you want to. Cliff, where do you keep your drinking whiskey? In the house. Come on. Cliff, who do you think it was? I don't know. If I knew who he was, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Yeah. Being the man you are, you'd be out trying to find him yourself. Right? You the sheriff, you find him. We'll find him. I promise you. Good. And then what happens? He'll stand charges. That'll do a lot of good. I was elected to do a job, Cliff, and I intend to do it. It'll be a fair trial. You don't believe that, do you? I believe what I see and what I know. Cliff, I want your guns. What for? I know you. We've been friends a long time. Get them. Is that why you kept me here? That's one reason. Well, you get them yourself. Springfield. That's my hunting gun. That's right. Get it. I 
I know what's on your mind, Cliff, but you'd better forget it, don't I lock you up. You are not the law. Yeah, I know. You are. That's right, I am. I love Janet. You know that. She invents That's a... all the more reason I should know! I might have believed that once, but not anymore. Why? Because the sheriff is black? Because they pinned a badge on you? I got to be a lawman because I believed in it. Because I believed that without the law, ain't none of us gonna make it, white or black. White or black. All I know is my child's in the hospital. Cliff, you work hard for what you got. It don't make sense to throw it away. You talk good, Sheriff. Come on, I'll run you over to the hospital. I got my pickup. is Cliff Wilder. Uh, one of your salesmen was out to my house uh, yesterday, I think. No, 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 no. you see, I, I, I want the policy, but I forgot his name. It'll be the man who covers the Grove District in Loma. Coswell Insurance Company. Seems he smells trouble. He said the switchboard got a call asking if a salesman was due in Loma City yesterday. Why should he smell trouble? Well, because he checked around and he found that this fellow made the same call to three other insurance companies. His name was... Cliff Wilder. Now, how did you know that? He's a father, not one of our more peaceful citizens. Janet must have told him something about a salesman when he found her before she passed out. Does sound like trouble. I don't think so. I took his guns away. That was a good idea. Is the girl all right? I haven't seen her yet. I did speak to the doctor, though. It's concussion. Luckily so. Mostly it's shock, pain, bleeding. The doctor says we can talk to her, but she probably won't remember much. You think there's something in the salesman angle? You can bet I'm going to look into it. Absolutely. Don't jump too fast here. I don't usually, do I? You're the sheriff. Let me know. Hoff, it's me, Jim. Yeah, sure. Uh, there are about five insurance companies that cover Loma City. I want you and Bonnie to check them all out. 
got about 30 minutes. Can you do it? Why not? And tell Soames to stick close to Cliff Wilder if he tries to get a weapon to bring him in. And then you meet me over at the hospital, right? Gotcha. might help. It's strange. It's, it's a blur. I was with him all that time and I can't remember what he looked like. The doctor said that might happen. We block out what we don't want to remember. He was white. About 30, I think. I, I'm not sure. Take it easy. Slow as you want. What time was it about? I'm not. Was he a salesman? Yeah. I told Dad. I think I did. An insurance salesman? I think so. Did you see his car? Not really. Thank you, Janet. If uh, you remember anything else, you call me. My wife sends her best. Vance. Wants to see you. Does he? He's just outside the door. I, uh, don't think I want to see anyone right now, Sheriff. Then you don't have to. He'll understand. Now you take it easy. You hear me? Mr. Lucas? Yes. Is it in the papers? Nothing's been in the papers, no. But it will be. I imagine if there's a trial, you have no reason to cry. None. People talk. What happened to you might have happened to anybody. There's no shame in it. What happened doesn't matter. People talk. God, how they talk. Why don't you try and get some sleep? Let us do some of that worry. You'll try. Well, give her some time, son, about a day. Is it that bad? No, but she is sedated and a little confused. Well, what did she say? Not very much. Yes. She doesn't remember very much, which may be the best thing for her.
He's taking it pretty hard. Yeah. Well, what you find? The only insurance company that covers Loma City is Carswell. A salesman named Walters. Walters? But he says he wasn't here yesterday. I'm going after him. You don't have to come, Harv, if you don't want to. Because this kind of case can get sticky. Whatever you think. No, I want you to decide. I know this town, know the pressures. Know what a thing like this might mean between you and your missus. Oh, Alma's all right. Just not used to this town. I don't know this Walters man, what he'll do, what he'll say. So I'd like you there. I want a witness. You're a witness, Sheriff. Might need two. One white. right there third desk on the right are you sure you want me in on this sheriff if you don't mind mr braden <laughs> whatever it is i give up what did i do rob the safe hey you're off gregory loma right larry walters i sold you some uh, life insurance wasn't it last Car night? insurance that's right never forget a face what can I do for you today, gentlemen? The sheriff would like to talk to you. Sure, sheriff. This is a preliminary inquiry into a case of rape, Mr. Walters. You have a right not to answer or to have your attorney present. Oh, it's perfectly all right, sheriff. Just fire away. We understand you were not in Loma City yesterday. Where were you? Oh, uh, it's a little embarrassing to answer in, in front of Mr. Braden here. I was supposed to be in Loma, but I wasn't. Where were you, Mr. Walters? Uh, at my sister's. See, I got this sister lives in Shorter, and she's after me all the time. Come on over, see the kids. You know, sisters. <laughs> anyway, I figured I'd drop by and say hello on my way out there, and uh, I fell asleep on the sofa after lunch. I'm sorry, Mr. Braden. I goofed off yesterday. We'll want to talk to your sister. Oh, of course. Here, let me jot down a number for you. you can give her a ring anytime you want to. Hey, huh? When I ask you a question, Mr. Walters, Answer me. Yes, sir. Sure thing, Sheriff. Listen, I, I apologize. Believe me, nobody's got more respect for what you folks are doing. Don't make a speech. Just answer the question. Yes, sir. Ever been out to Cliff Wilders? Yes, sir, about two months ago. That's why I was figuring on dropping in on him yesterday. He's such a good prospect. Although a little slow paying, like most of those people are. Still in all these days, Mr. Brady. Do you have a picture of yourself? No, sir, I do not. Have one made. You a married man, Mr. Walters? No, sir. I like my freedom too much. <laughs> I want four fingers of your right hand on this chemically treated card. Like that? Yes, right here. Hey, this is serious, isn't it? Yes, sir. Rape is. Uh, Sheriff Lucas? Hey, listen, Marv. I want to come over and uh, see you pretty soon about that life insurance. You know, a guy in your line needs all the protection he can get, right? Oh, and Harv, uh, it wasn't me. It's a smooth cap. Yeah. Even if Janet can identify him, which I doubt. What about the sister? We'll check it out. But I can guess. She leaves us? Nowhere. We got a smart lie on our hands. And no witnesses. Jim, I'm sorry, but it doesn't add up to a case. Then forget the report. Let's talk about the man himself. He's 38, unmarried, a confirmed bachelor, proud of his freedom, close quote. A big man with the boys in the back room. Let's stick to the facts. All right. He's had six jobs in 10 years. 
And he's not doing so well on this one. He's $2,000 in debt and afraid of being fired. He goes out to Cliff Wilder's. It's a hot day and he hasn't made a sale in two weeks. Cliff is not there. Instead, he meets a college girl. Smart, attractive, independent, black and alone. He takes out his fears, his frustration. That's, that's sociology, not law. But that's what happened. Let's be objective. Is there any previous history of rape? No. Or any violent activity of any kind? Not that we know of. Or even previous arrest? Now, let's look at this medical report here. I know. I no, know. no, listen, this is important. Abrasions, considerable edema, internal bleeding, definite evidence of the act. Now, listen carefully. I cannot, however, from these examinations conclude that force was a factor. I knew this kind of bigot. The feelings don't count here. Rape needs eyewitnesses. Janet Wilder cannot even make a positive identification. Walter's sister confirms his story. I know I'm right. Nobody else in Shorter saw him at his sister's that day. It's possible nobody else did. No. He says he was there three hours. He parked his car. He arrived. He left. Somebody would have seen him. You questioned everybody on the block. I say the sisters of perjury. Can we prove that? We can't even prove the crime. We can't even place the man on the scene of the crime. Well, we Where have, are we? We have one thing. We know he bought gas in Loma City that day. Who says? Charlie Doby. <laughs> Charlie Doby. <laughs> 69, 70, half blind. A lawyer would rip him to pieces. You're grasping at straws. I have a pickup order for Walters. All it needs is a signature. Now, somebody else must have seen him in Loma City, and I'm sure they'll come forward. You can't get a pickup order on conjecture. There's got to be judicial process. Then make it on suspicion of committing a felony. Who's suspicion? Mine. And mine. <laughs> no judge in the county would sign that. You can sign it. Under 37A. That's only 24 hours. That's all I need, 24 hours. But let's ask ourselves this question. Is the man insane? Don't you think he thought of the consequences of his act? No, he didn't figure he had to. He'd lie and find other liars. It's as simple as that. It's happened a thousand times. I know this man. I've been up against him all my life. He's not a psychopath. I wish it were that simple. This man is a racist, a quiet racist, the worst kind. Sheriff, Wilder's got himself a gun, and he's gone after Walters. down again, Mr. I knew you will. Anybody want a drink? Come on, Larry.
Sheriff, what's going on here? What were those shots? Who fired them? Sheriff fired the first shot, or you'd be a dead man. Boy, you dirty rascal! Hold it, hold it. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Oh, about that, he tried to kill me. I think you better come in with us, Mr. Walters. Well, what for? You got your man, didn't you? Because I have a paper here that says so. What's this supposed to be? Just what it says. Do I get to call my lawyer? Of course. We'll pay for the call. And the lockup. Well, I earned my pay tonight, I'll tell you that. Hey, what about a towel? Got both men locked up. I don't want to hear about it. Honey, what's the matter? What's bugging you, Alma? I want you to quit, Harv. What? Harv, I've tried. I have tried. I truly have, but I can't. Tell me why. Because I'm sick of this case. I'm sick. I'm sick of Jim Lucas and I'm sick of Loma. Honey, it's just, just new to you, that's all. Give yourself a chance. Loma City is a good town. I hate it. I hate it. But you like this house. When I finish that room and there's a couple of kids running around. No. What is it, your brother Eddie? Yes, it's my brother Eddie. But he's not the only one. I hear things. Why do you hear? We live next door to them. You work for them. They're in our lives. Okay, okay, um, okay. you hear things. There's always going to be some who talk like that. A few will never change. They're not Loma City. Jim Lucas got elected by 60% of the vote. I don't care. I am not going to have any of my children brought up like this. Now or ever. Honey, it's late. Let's go to bed. No. That's not going to solve anything. Harv, you're taking sides. You're taking their side. You're taking their side against your own kind. Walters is not my kind. All yours are your brothers. Oh, honey, please believe me. Oh, if I can't stand it. This is a preliminary hearing in the absence of a jury. Although we'll follow the general rules of evidence, uh, let's keep it informal and get to the truth. All right. Charlie, how's your eyesight? Not too good. Those glasses don't do you too much good either, do they? No, they don't. How old are you, Charlie? 69. 69? And that's why I remember. Just answer the questions, please. Uh, let's hear them out. Remember what, Mr. Doby? He says to me, it's hot. And I said, I seen it hotter. I never did. Oh, yes, you did. You were wearing a dark gray suit, a dark gray hat, with a hat band and tie that matched, and you was driving a 1963 white Corvair automobile. How is it you remember? Well, I'm coming to that. You says to me, how long you been pumping gas, boy? And I said, I'm 69 years of age. Now, how old I gotta be before you stop calling me boy? <laughs> Look, you give me a $5 bill, and I give you a dollar 19 cents change. And you said, clean off my windshield, boy. So I make out like I don't even hear you. Then you asked me how to get to James Road, where Cliff Wilder lived. During this uh, alleged meeting, did my client actually use the words where Cliff Wilder lives? Did he say that? Or are you saying it now? I'm saying it now. Move to strike, merely asking a street address is totally inconclusive. Uh, strike where Cliff Wilder lives. Mr. Paulson, please, please. 
Well, that's where he went, due west, because if he was trying to get to Shorter, Shorter's is east. Uh, Your Honor, will the court grant a short recess? My clients will have a statement to make. Five minutes, gentlemen. Jim? Hmm? I got to talk to you. Sure. Privately. Sounds serious, huh? Harv? Sheriff? Bill, uh, can I buy a cup of coffee? Uh, oh, sure. Alan's not well. Oh? What's the matter? Well, her health is poor, has been for some time. She's not used to the climate. We got the best there is, according to the Chamber of Commerce. Don't, Jim. Okay. Because we're leaving. Leaving? What do you mean? I'm quitting, Sheriff. It's not really her health or the climate, is it? It's this case. I can't talk about it. Can I say something? Sure. I need you, Hav. The town needs you. You're a good cop, and I'm a good cop. And together we are more than just two good cops. I know that. But I'm not going to lie to you, Jim. I gave her my word. We're leaving. I'm sorry, Hav. I am too. Judges in, Sheriff. Thanks, Bill. Your Honor, I think it's time to present to this court information which will throw a totally new light on these proceedings. My client admits to his presence in Loma on the day in question. He pleads guilty of lying to police officers to the county attorney and to this court. He wishes to make a full, free, and voluntary statement. Well, uh, f first, I want to I want to explain why I lied, Your Honor. Uh, to begin with, after the sheriff saved my life, and I want to say in open court, I owe my life to that man. Uh, I realized that somebody was trying to make a federal case out of absolutely nothing. Object strongly, Your Honor. Uh, keep your statement objective, Mr. Walters. A charge of rape is hardly nothing. Oh, of, of course. I, I understand. I'm sorry. The only point is that thinking that, I, I, I just felt that the best way out would be an alibi. Now, I was wrong. I admit it. I, I was dead wrong. I, I even got my sister to lie for me, but... I never thought that this thing would come to any kind of a trial. Uh, you lied, in fact, to protect Janet Wilder's reputation. That's right. I object to this so-called statement, Your Honor. It's self-serving and prejudicial. I'll hear the rest of it. Exception. Go on, Mr. Walters. Well, I didn't want to drag this little girl's name through the mud unless object. I had to, and it's obvious I have no other choice. Object within the most strenuous terms, Your Honor. Mr. Kinsella, I share some of your feelings, but I want to hear the whole statement first. There's no jury present, and I'm sure we can distinguish objective testimony from self-serving comment. But I do most strongly caution this witness against perjury. Oh, oh, of course, you I Yes, sir. Now, what is the truth about what happened that day? Well, uh, I, I called on Cliff to sell him a policy, and he wasn't home. Now, I, I should have left, I admit it, but I'm only human, by which I mean Janet, off Miss Wilder, offered me a drink. You asked me for it. You're quite right, and you were kind enough to give it to me. Uh, what kind of a drink was that, Mr. Wallace? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. It was uh, beer or... A soda! If you say so, I'm sure it, it must have been... The only point was that it was a very warm day, and, and there was music playing somewhere, and, and, uh, and uh, she wasn't worrying very much. 
I, I, ju I don't like to use language like this in a courtroom, Your Honor, but the only point is a guy knows when a girl I is want lying. her words. What did she say? Well, she didn't say anything with her mouth. She didn't have to. Your Honor, yeah, I must protest. That's what I didn't want to have to say in court. The witness must be admonished there to There will be no further statements, Mr. Waters. You will answer the questions from counsel only. Proceed. Now, Mr. Walters, you admit this relationship took place. Yes. Now, no force was used. That gal asked for it. Liar! Liar! Oh, liar! Your Honor, Your Honor. I move his remarks be stricken. And hers, too. Strike them both, and I caution everyone to restrain himself. Now, Mr. Walters, you say no force was used. Absolutely not. How do you account for this medical report? And I quote, abrasions. Considerable edema, internal bleeding. You're right, here you are, you're right. I don't know anything about that kind of medical jargon. All I know is that the way that girl carries on. Now you can ask anybody. I myself was black and blue for three whole days. You're black right, and blue I for three. That this witness's entire testimony be stricken. There isn't the slightest evidence that the moral character of Janet Wilder. Oh yes, there is. What evidence? Well, for what? Yeah, I'm we... addressing Mr. Paulson, not you, Mr. Walters. Your Honor. We have prepared our case very carefully, including an investigation into the moral habits of Janet Wilder. Now, wait a minute. I would like to call the medical examiner. You examined the complainant immediately after the incident in question, did you not? That is correct. Uh, doctor, could forcible entry be established? No, sir, it could not. Now, prior to the incident in question, was the complainant a virgin or was she not? She was not. The truth is that Janet Wilder is hardly as pure as driven snow. The sheriff's own son can attest to that. Any further cross? This matter can be put into one sentence. It's the word of this witness against the word of that witness. Will you go to trial, Mr. Kinsella? I don't know. This hearing is adjourned. Professional judgment tells me that if we go to trial, we'll probably be slaughtered. But if we drop charges and he walks off scot-free, we turn the clock back 20 years. What is that supposed to mean? There was a time when a black girl was fair game to the Walters of the community. I'd like to think that day is over. I think you would, too. You know what a trial would do to Janet Wiley? You want to see her go through that again? What do you think she's going through now? You're overboard, Jim. You're over-involved. We're saying to this town, to everybody, forget due process. Courts are a waste of time. The only thing left is a gun. The world doesn't stand or fall on this case, Chip. Mine does. We go to trial. We're ready. Pa. Well, is everything ready? Yeah, but the sauce isn't right. Hmm. Where'd you put in there? Salt, pepper, ketchup, mustard. Sean, you left out the mule. The what? You can't make a barbecue sauce without hot peppers. We're waiting on you, Vance. I'm not hungry. We're having our Sunday dinner. 
Then you'll sit with us, please. Look, Ma, he locked up Cliff Wilder. He saved that rapist's life. All this trial is going to do is poison the town's mind against Janet. He's doing their work for them. You don't know what you're talking about, Sue. Just keep your mouth shut. Maybe a pig is always a pig. Don't you dare talk like that about your father. He's not my father. That's right, and you better remember it, even though he never mentions it. But he's raised you since your own father died. And he's cared for you like his very own son. I know all of that. You listen to me. He has fed you, put clothes on your back, and he's sending you through college so you won't wind up like your real father, a grown man, beating his head against a stone wall. What's the sense in talking? Now, that's the truth. With you, that's all it's been, talk. Jim Lucas has never laid a hand on you. Lord knows maybe he should have. Now, you come outside now. You're not going to spoil our Sunday dinner. Why don't you ask for it? I can reach it. And what about your elbow on the table? No, children, eat your steak while it's hot. I think it's about time that we had a talk. Let's enjoy the day, Jim. No, it's right in front of us and it won't go away. Son? I know how you feel. No, you don't. Boy. Let him speak his piece, Sue Ann. I just got one question. Who's right, you or Cliff Wilder? Who do you think? I'm asking you. It takes more than a gun to make a man. It takes brains and guts. And tomorrow, when you get up there on that witness stand, you're going to find out that a courtroom can be a pretty good place to fight in. Words can be weapons, too, and sometimes they can hurt a man worse than bullets. We'll find out tomorrow how good you are. The boy is only 19, James. 18 is a man, Sue Ann, and sometimes 12. Up on that stand, it's you or them, and they're playing for keeps. I hope you're ready. Uh, Mr. Lucas... What are your relations with Janet Wilder? We're friends. What was that word? Friends? Objection. Let the question be specific, Mr. Paulson. Quite right, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Lucas, on the night of June 19th, which was a Saturday night, to refresh your memory, did you register at the Lakeview Motel? Yeah, there was a dance. A group of us went the out. The question there. is, did you register? Now, wait a minute. I have here a certified copy of the motel registration. Is that your handwriting? Yes. Will you read it, please? Mr. and Mrs. V. James. Is that your name? No. But you used it nonetheless, a false name. Are you married? No. Well, who was the Mrs. V. James on this particular occasion? Objection. What do you mean by Did that? I strike the phrase on this particular occasion. Who was Mrs. V. James? <laughs> Look, there was a dance. Now, a group of us went out there. Exams were over. It was about a dozen of us. Just please tell the court, where did you and Mrs. James spend the night? I'm not letting you put words in my mouth. Janet Wilder isn't like that. I am pointing to the complainant, and I am asking you if this girl is Mrs. V. James. You're trying to make something dirty out of nothing. Young man, did you register at the Lakeview Motel under a false name and occupy the premises with the complaining witness? Sure, I registered. We all Just did. Just answer but... yes or no, please. Yes. God, Janet, I'm sorry. You did the best you could. Listen, stop blaming yourself. I'm not sorry about that. I'm sorry about us. Why us? We're, we're still no, the same. No, we're not. 
because, let's face it, I'm famous. No. Yes, I am. Ask anybody. I'm just a... Look, don't make it any harder, because that only makes it worse. back, I think. I asked him to trim the hedge. Get off your feet, Sue Ann. Maybe I can do something on the stand tomorrow. Lord, I hope so. Pa! The fence! He took the car, Pa, and drove off. And he took his shotgun. Gregory. Tom, I, I, I can't find Eddie Soames and I need a car. Can I have yours? What happened? Somebody stole my car and is gunning after Walters. Who? Lend me the car or don't. I'm on my way. I'm going with you. Hold it. Let's take the law road. Maybe we can head him off. in your life, but you are wrong. Sometimes it takes more than talk. Hey, you can stop it. You've got to learn. Close your eyes, get to sleep. I upheld the law and beat my son. Hush now, go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. I beat him. Come on, turn over. Let me rub you back. Turn over, honey. You actually beat him? Must have been an awful hard thing for him to do. That's what he believes. It 
What's the matter, honey? You want some more coffee? I upheld the law, all right. But whose law did I uphold? James, that's enough. Because the boy is right. The boy is wrong. Tomorrow morning, that man walks out of that court a free man. You can't change the world overnight. That's why the young people are the way they are. They've got nothing to believe in. Honey, you are going to drive yourself crazy. Don't stop. I will, unless you do. Sheriff here. Sheriff, this is Alma Gregory. Yes, Miss Gregory? Uh, Sheriff, could, uh, could you come over here, please? Right away? I, uh, I know I should have come forward sooner, Sheriff. But I didn't. I thought when Charlie Doby, uh, identified him that, well, that'd be enough. And all along, I knew what happened. What did happen, Mrs. Gregory? I saw him drive past our house to the Wilders. And uh, I heard the whole thing. He forced her, Sheriff. I heard her fight that man. And I heard him, too. You'll have to testify. Must I? Yes. An open court. And his lawyer is not going to make it easy for you. He'll ask you, Alma, why you came forward after all this time. He'll ask you that. Well, I... Well, because of what... Because of what you did. Beating your own son like that for taking the law into his own hands. All along, I, I knew what had happened, and I, I could have helped, but... Well, all I did was try and stay out of it. And then after what you did, I, I just couldn't anymore. Hmm. Sheriff, could you do me a favor, please? That depends, Mrs. Gregory. Well, do you have to say that I volunteered? Could you say that, that you came and asked me? Why is that? Well, because a person has a duty to perform if they're called upon. But... You don't have to volunteer. Could you live with that, Mrs. Gregory? Now that I've said it out loud, I... I don't know. I don't know. You know, this is the first time I've been in your home. It's very nice. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Night, Hoff. Good night, Jim. Still out. Is that good or bad? I'll let you know when they come back in. That's comforting. Son, I, I want to thank you. I wish I would have killed him. Yeah, I know how you feel. How's it between you and your father? He's got his ideas and... I got mine. Look at Janet. Go on over to her. She doesn't want me to. Oh, give her time. Time. Wait. Be patient. Trust the courts. The world is getting better. We want it now. Stick with her, boy.
Jim. You ought to talk to that boy. What for? Because you're good at it. He might listen to you. You didn't. I'm an old dog. <laughs> Cliff, I think the time for talk is over now. If the jury convicts, maybe these kids will hear what we've been trying to tell them. Otherwise... Jury's coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. And how do you find? We find the defendant guilty as charged. Bailiff, take the prisoner. This court stands adjourned. I guess your pa was right. One verdict doesn't change the world. No, it doesn't. It could have gone the other way. But it didn't. It can happen. That's what counts. We'll see about that, Pa. Well, Sheriff, we've got a store for back at the office. That's right. Let's go. Where do we start? Whatever blows up first, Charles. Huh?